Hi everyone and welcome back. So in today's video I'm going to be doing a sketchbook tutorial and I'm going to be working on a page in my sketchbook and I'm going to be using some watercolours, a waterproof fine liner, some acrylic paint pens, a graphite pencil, some water and some brushes and today we're going to be creating a mermaid inspired piece and mermaid is an art challenge that is currently running during the month of May. It's a little bit like Inktober, it's a basically a 31 day art challenge where you create a piece of art every every day according to a theme and mermaid is all about mermaids now I'm not participating in the full 31 day challenge but I thought it'd be fun to to do at least one piece in my sketchbook that has a mermaid inspired vibe so to start with I'm sketching out the silhouette of the girl because what I thought I'd do instead of doing a full body mermaid I thought it'd be nice to do a silhouette of a of a mermaid and then do a, a sort of a, a mermaid inspired pattern behind it so that's what we're going to be working on and I sketched out I started with a circle as you saw for the head then drew a kind of like a tri triangular shape to indicate where the jaw line goes and then I drew on the nose the lips and then I took her chest down uh, the line of her chest and then I drew on the hair now because this is a silhouette I had to be quite strategic with where I was placing things because you're only going to see the outline so you can have no details inside when you're doing a silhouette like this and so what I did was I had the hair overhanging her head a little bit because for me if it's not if you can't see a little bit of the hair overhanging it, it kind of looks a little weird just to have her hair slick back, slicked back or at least it did when I sketched this out and I also liked the overhanging hair because it's a little bit of a, a tribute to Ariel from The Little Mermaid now her hair in the movie overhangs a lot more than this one does but it's just it's just a little bit there and when you look at it it to me it reminds me a little bit of Ariel from The Little Mermaid so you get the right sort of vibes going on with with it being a mermaid inspired piece so I did the overhanging hair at the front, then I took the hair down the back and then I curled it round the front as well because I think when I'm doing silhouettes I like to make them self-contained, I don't like to just end them into nothing so I try to make her look a little bit like a sticker as well. If you try and think of it like a sticker it sort of helps to design the silhouette shape. So once I have her down I'm now working on the background and I used a roll of masking tape to create a circle and you could use any template, a, a, a bowl or a dish a, a, a roll of tape, anything that's a circle. Um, I just use that to create a circle in the background and then I'm taking a ruler and I'm using it to make some parallel lines at, a, at, the, at an equal distance apart all the way up the circle and that's going to help me guide my seashell um, scale type pattern and you'll see what I'm doing in a moment but the lines help to keep the pattern at the same level all the way across and it really helps to make the whole thing look very uniform which is really which is what I'm going for and I decided to draw the circle behind her because I didn't want her just to be a floating silhouette on the page and I also wanted to bring back the mermaid theme so I think that because she looks to me at least she kind of has a mermaidy themed vibe but and also because I think her hair the way it curls looks a little bit it kind of reminded me a little bit of like a, an octopus or something and you know where you have that those curving uh, limbs it had that sort of vibe but I also wanted to reinforce the theme even more in the background so the circle helps to anchor the silhouette on the page the foreground element but it also and, and we can also use it to reinforce the theme of the page and for this I'm drawing it's like a scales so sometimes you'll see the, this is like the scales of the mermaid's tail being repeated in the background and it's a very simple pattern to draw I used those lines to help me guide it and then I do, I'm just sort of drawing almost like elongated semicircles in the rows um, in the background to create that pattern and that way we, we can really uh, bring across the mermaid theme. And then I went ahead and I used my purple multi-liner and this is a Copic multi-liner so it's waterproof and having a waterproof multi-liner is quite important for this. Uh, if you don't have one you could just outline it in a pencil and then uh, watercolour, do all the watercolour work and then come back over it afterwards with, with a fine liner to do the outlines. Um, but you could of course actually just use a pencil, It's not um, you don't need to use a fine liner at all. But I went ahead and I outlined the silhouette and the pattern in the background and then I went around the circle in the background again with that multi-liner just to reinforce the outside line a little bit because just to help it stand out a bit more. 
So now I'm going to be using my watercolours. Any watercolour set will work here. These are the ones from Mozart Supplies. These are the ones that I had around, so that's what I was using. And I'm now colouring, colour blocking in the silhouette. Now you could use any colour scheme you wanted for this piece. And with all these sketchbook videos, my main goal is just to provide some inspiration. If there are elements that you like and you'd like to follow along in your own sketchbooks, then that's great. But if there's anything that I'm doing that you don't like the look of, or I'm using a colour you don't like, then feel Feel free go ahead and change it for your own book and make the idea your own so what I'm doing is I've I'm using a black because I felt like the black would really stand out against the background now a dark blue may also look nice a dark green would also look nice but I feel for silhouettes for me a black black is really effective now I actually was going for a slightly textured look for the silhouette. So as you can see, the watercolor is not going on in a uniform way. If you wanted the color, if you wanted to color block and not to be able to see any brush strokes and to have it very uniform, then you could always use a, a drawing ink like the Winsor & Newton black drawing ink. That would work quite well or use an acrylic paint or something like that. But I wanted the texture because I feel like when I'm when I'm drawing it because the silhouette is so flat there's no other there's nothing else inside of it I feel like the texture gives it a little bit more interest just a little bit more visual interest a little bit like how if you've ever seen digital painting often people will apply texture to digital art just to give it a little bit more interest rather than just having a flat color and I feel like the same sort of um, I was kind of applying the same sort of um, idea here so I changed my water after using that black paint and now I'm just working on the background and to do that I'm taking the water and I'm spreading it just the clean water and spreading it all inside that circle and then I'm dropping in little bits of paint and because this is working wet into wet so it's going to create a very blended um, look and this is the same sort of technique that you would use if you were doing let's say like a galaxy painting or something and I'm started with two different blues and then I'm adding in some green so that it would have a so that the blue and the green would mix and there would be some turquoises and teals as well as the blues and I'm also going in with my brush and I'm just sort of guiding the pigment directly to the edge of the circle and around the silhouette. I have to be a little careful here, um, particularly when I'm pulling the pigment up against the silhouette because it's very easy to reactivate the black pigment. I didn't have too much trouble with this but it is important that you dry between the, the black layer and the blue layer otherwise you're going to get a big mess. So the last thing I did was to add in a little bit of pearlescent paint. This particular paint set comes with a really nice range of pearlescent watercolours. So I added in a little bit of some gold pearlescent paint. You can't see it so clearly unless you hold the finished painting up against the light and slightly twist it and then you do see this, a slight shimmer. And again, I think that just helps to reinforce the mermaid theme. It's nice to have a little bit of a shimmer in there, but I didn't want it to be too obvious. And that's one of the reasons why I like using these paints. So so once everything was all dried, I'm now going in to add the some of the final details with the Posca paint pens, and these are no, these are an acrylic opaque paint pen. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm using the white to outline the silhouette, just where she's on top of the background, and that really just to help make her pop. And this is also a good time to fix any mistakes. So when I was painting, there was around by the nose, I slightly went out a little bit too far. So at this point, I can go in with the white paint pen and I could just sort of fix up those lines and redefine the lines a little bit more. And um, particularly if you have the finer nib, on the paint, the finest uh, nib of the paint pen you can do that with, or you can use a white gel pen, whatever you have, just, it's a good point, a good time to kind of uh, fix any mistakes if you've made any during the painting process. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding in a little bit of an embellishment on her head. Now, if, as I said earlier, if you don't like this step, you can skip this. Now, I felt it just added a little bit more interest to the piece because I felt like the piece was very simple at the time and I like to add quite a lot of detail even to my more simpler pieces. So I decided to add in a, a little bit of a flower and some, some, some like little kind of like hanging beads, I guess, something that she's wearing in her head. 
And then I also am going in and I'm re-outlining those purple lines in the background of the seashell pattern. I wanted it to have a subtle look, but I just wanted the lines to pop out a little bit more so that it had a nat so that the background had an underwater fluid natural look, which the watercolour gave it, but also that you could see the pattern and so that you could see that it was a kind of a shell-like pattern and so it would reinforce the mermaid theme. And now I'm going in and I'm adding some tiny little circles into the pattern and I, I don't think it's picking Picking up very well on camera um, but I'm just adding a simple circle into the center of each of the half circles in the pattern just again to add a little bit more detail it is an optional step but I do think it does help to give the piece a little bit more um, extra interest to the background and I'm just going in with the, the blue paint pen and I'm filling in those little circles at this point it's really a question of what you like. If you if you like it how it is then you can stop. I just kept pushing it and fiddling with it a little bit more just to kind of see what I could add, if I could add anything else and when I get to a point like this I always look at the piece and I think can I add anything else? Is there anything that I could do to enhance the theme or to pull certain elements out? And as you can see I kind of went into that flower and just sort of filled it in a little bit more. I, I'm not a hundred percent in love with how that flower turned out but I do I do like the fact that it's there because it, I think it kind of adds, there's like a three layered effect to the piece now. There's the flower, the silhouette and then the background and I think that uh, creates a nice composition. So that's the piece for this week. I really hope that if you were looking for some inspiration that this video was helpful. Um, as always I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments make sure you leave them in in the comment section down below and I have a poll on this video so if you'd like to have a look at the poll and vote on what art supplies we use for next week's sketchbook session every Friday I'm uh, from from now onwards I'm hoping to do a new sketchbook session video and that's where we will look we'll take a page in our sketchbooks and we will play around and create a page using some different supplies to some different themes and I really hope you'll join me again next Friday for that and don't forget to vote on what art supply we should use in, in, in for next week's video anyway I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I I will see you next time.